Some civilizations, like like the Mongols, for instance, they pretty much only make Mangadai in the Imperial Age because they're just that good. If you if you know they're, they're just so good that you just can't not make them. Uh, other civs though, like they need to have versatility. Like the Celts, for instance, um, they shouldn't just make Woad Raiders. They can also well, make it's, Celts making Woad Raiders is good, but a better combination would be like Siege Onager and Halberdier most of the time. So using Siege in combination with your units is generally the best way to go. Um, and, and other civs, it depends as well. Like as an example with the Celts, uh, the Celts don't have many good units, there are many things they can do in the early stage of the game. If you see an Arabia game with the Celts, the Celts generally make archers and crossbows, and then they move into Woad Raiders later on, and then all they do halves and siege later on. Uh, the reason for that is because the Celts don't want to invest into knights, because they have some of the worst paladins in the game. In fact, the uh, Malian Cavalier is better than the, the Celt uh, paladins. You just don't want to be making paladins as the Celts. So, they generally make crossbows. And then they transition away from crossbow into Woad Raiders later on. So you've got to play to your strengths at different stages of the game. Um, because Sibs have different strengths at different points of the game, basically. Uh, anyway, I'm like really far behind in the chat. Uh, Foghorn asks if you can upload content to the, uh, to, to the university thing. I don't know yet. Maybe. We'll see. We might have some guest writers like Viper and stuff. Uh, but we will see. We'll see about that. Uh, anyway, this game so far, uh, not a huge amount of actions, a bit of raiding. You saw Plopper getting killed back here. Uh, those Shotels, like I say, I mean, they, they, they're really good, but they have to have the advantage in numbers. Once you've got the, the, the number advantage, you, you're in a good position. But Plopper's building a couple of ranges now. It looks like he's going to be switching into making, making some crossbows. Uh, and that 15% faster firing speed of the Ethiopian crossbow is now it looks like he's going to be switching into making making some crossbows uh, and that 15 percent faster firing speed of the ethiopian crossbow is a really strong bonus actually and um you know it it, it massively increases the dps of the unit uh, I, I read on reddit earlier on um i can't remember who wrote it actually it was it was i can't remember but basically the strength of a unit is often determined by how quickly it attacks, the amount of attack it does, and then the amount of HP it has. Um, so, the, the simple fact of increasing the, the, the reload time, or decreasing the reload time, increasing the shooting speed, it allows them to do so much more damage over time. And as long as you protect those archers, they're, they're going to be absolutely devastating um, with that 15% faster attack speed. It might not sound like a lot, but it really does make a big difference. So yeah, the team in the south actually looking fairly decent at the moment, to be honest with you. Um, Purple's got a, a good hold here. He's got a fortified wall up. So he's kind of forgetting that this can actually be... This, this wall here from green, he can delete that and run through without having to go through this fortified wall. Uh, Gamisha's making a bunch of Boyar. And I think this is like a seriously powerful, seriously powerful combo. But we are a Mangadai man. That is nutty. Nuts good. And uh, on the right side, uh, Adam the Rabbit's kind of pushed up a little bit here. And he's holding forward, uh, quite forward of his position. So he's looking good. Not only that, but the team in the south have water control as well. So gamisha has got a load of fish going on here. And in fact, Gamisha, the red player, has the score lead right now. Uh, and that's mostly for the fish, I think. You know, Purple's not really fishing. Uh, Teal's not fishing that much. But Red's really abusing that. And he's also got Galleons out as well. So, uh, War Galleons. So, he's doing good. I think these guys are going to push in pretty quickly here. Uh, in this situation for, for Ponoto, he's in a tough spot. Because this is going to be really hard. Now, if he was against Mangadai, the logical thing to make is obviously Huskar's right. But since he's also right, but since he's also up against Boyar, Huskar's just don't cut the mustard anymore. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Cut the mustard. Does that mean like farting or something? I don't know. But anyway, um, since he's making um, Boyar, he can't make Huskar's. They just don't don't do the trick. So. He's gonna need he's gonna need support from from Plopper over here. I think Plopper's gonna be better off doing Arbalest on this right left side. Uh, a combination of Arbalest and Huskars would be great. Uh, I think that might even be better than the Mangadai and the Boyar because the Arbalest should target the Boyar. Boyar are pretty weak to arrows, and then the Huskars should target the Mangadai, and they're very good versus Mangadai. So I think that would work out for these guys um, if they went for that kind of unit combination. But three players, look at that Imperial Age at the same time, and um, they're doing very good. Indeed. Uh, Sam Fenton 89 and the chat asks why do why do you players 
patrol units uh, over a very small space. And the reason for that is because it, it just helps you defend. Um, if you've got your units just standing there, then when an enemy comes nearby, uh, some might attack it, some might just kind of like sit, sit idle at the back and they just stand around doing nothing. But if you patrol your army on the spot in a small space, um, as soon as anything comes nearby, they'll automatically attack it and then they'll go back to patrolling. They won't go chasing or running away too much. Uh, they should just kill it and then they'll just stay where they are. Uh, it basically, it allows your units to attack faster as well. It just makes them better um, for, for engaging when you're not watching your army. Um, you should always, always try and patrol your armies whenever you're moving them somewhere because, or attack move them because if they run into some enemies and you're not patrolling then your enemies can kill you and unless you realize that you're being attacked you could lose your entire army without even noticing. Um, so generally people uh, people do that, uh, they patrol. It's so right now Gamish is like building up these elite boyar back here, look at this, really really beefy units. Eight, nine melee armor now, nine melee armor, that's a really tanky melee, uh, for, uh, tanky to melee um, attacks. A uh, reasonable high attack as well with uh, 16 damage and uh, these boyar are looking very strong. They should be able to run in here and take down these uh, husk girls easy, easy. Uh, I I'm just surprised that Plop is not making many archers here, I feel like Arbalest for Plopper would be a good choice. He's currently doing uh, elite showtails though, and these are very strong. If he can, if he can run through, if he can like break a wall down and go for it, that'd be great. But let's see what happens here because this is not a good fight for for Ponato to, to go with. He needs to fight with Plopper here, and, and Plopper is just not engaging with him. So these guys have to fight together, otherwise they're going to be in a bit of trouble. Uh, perhaps adding in some helps here for Ponato could be a good idea as well, um, just to kind of deal with these Boyar a little bit. These guys don't really have anything to deal with the Boyar right now. Elite Shotels, no, -uh, no good. Um, Huskals, no good. And Halberdier, even they are fairly limited versus the Boyar, since the huge uh, melee armor is just gonna negate so much damage from those Husk uh, from the Halbs there. Uh, what do I think about Finnish people? <laughs> I've never really met many Finnish people. I did play CSGO with a guy from Finland and he was really nice. So, I only have good impressions, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, Furious Official also asks, one question not about AoE. How do you celebrate Christmas? Or do you celebrate Christmas? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, go to Hannah's parents for Christmas this year, uh, like last year. Uh, it'd be nice, we go over for dinner and have the day there and open presents there, it'll be lovely. Uh, I'm not really a religious person, uh, I, I'm not Christian or anything, but I think Christmas is more of a tradition than anything these days. Um, I think most, a lot of people who celebrate Christmas aren't necessarily religious. I think it's necessarily religious. I think it's, it's just become a, a national holiday, a, a proper tradition, and uh, whether or not you're religious or whatever, um, people celebrate it, and I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think you have to be religious to, to celebrate a religious holiday. Um, it, I think, in fact, it's a good thing that people still celebrate it, even if they're not religious. But anyway, um, I'm pushing it on this right side. Nelos here with these elite eagle warriors looking very strong. Seal's just not a leg to stand on right now. He tried to hold these guys out as long as they could, but the siege ram's breaking down those stone walls, and the Persians don't get fortified walls, so... Um, it's, it's not so good for him. Uh, Patera asks, can I say Prague in, in Czech? It's Praha. <laughs> Praha. Praha Pragenius. <laughs> um, but yeah, Gamisha coming in here with the Boyar though. That should clean things up. And I tell you what, I don't know why Gamisha was complaining about having the slabs at the start of this game. Because these Boyar are applicable in nearly every situation right now. Taking out the Aztecs? You're laughing. The Boyar are going to absolutely destroy that. Taking out the Goths? you got to be laughing because the slabs are so good at that. Um, all he needs now is, is a little bit of siege and he's going to be sorted. Uh, the slabs get cheaper siege. Uh, uh, Gamish has no excuse. Like I, I want to see um, scorpions or, or onagers from, from Gamish right now. But honestly, the uh, the Boyar here are doing so good. And look at this. This is great teamwork. Uh, Gamish and Cox, not Glocks, just coming into the right side, defending uh, and then letting, uh, letting Teal get back on with it. On the left side, Ponato uh, trying to push in, he's doing a pretty good job. Obviously, you know, these boys are really outnumbered here, so I expect the Halbs to win, of course. Um, but with these Elite Mangadai behind it, the Halbs are going to get absolutely uh, 
absolutely massacred. Uh, Plopper though, finally doing the arbalest. I, I'm glad to see this, because he needs these. These arbalest, I guess, because he needs these. These arbalest are huge for him. And at this stage in the game, like, I... I I really thought the team in the south were, were going to get a big advantage, but I'm starting to feel like the team in the north are, are really starting to slowly take the edge now, as on the right side, Flopper moves in, and I don't know what he's doing, he's not patrolling his units, this is why you should patrol the units, exactly this, because as he's telling his units to come in here, he's getting cut down by these guys, they are finally reached their destination, they'll now turn on the enemy, but if he'd have patrolled, he could have killed these units sooner, and he would have had more units left alive. Uh, but yeah, Teal is kind of 2v1, he's got, uh, you know, grey and blue attacking him at the same time, it kind of sucks for him, and on the left side, well, that is, uh, that is, that is pretty huge, actually. Those Mangulai are doing so much work. You might be thinking, hey, Huskulls, 10 pierce armor, no problem, but the Mangulai fire so quickly that they really do do the work. But he has got to be careful. On a Jira out for Plopper right now, and if I know Plopper, he should be making... Don't know the hotkey to go to the fucking siege workshop. God damn it! I, all my hotkeys are different. He should be doing siege onager, and he should be doing torsion engines. If Plopper does torsion engines and siege onager, you can say goodbye to your Magadai because that's going to be huge for him. You also need siege engineers for the extra range, but you know, with a couple of onagers in here, it's going to be massive as long as they don't get focused down. All big shot on the left side to do a lot of damage out there, and the traps are falling on the castles, warriors, and that. That is gonna hurt these guys so much. It's gonna hurt so much. These total warriors, look at that. Ridiculous damage. We're looking at 22 damage there. That's enough to two shot a villager. One shot, two shot, and they are dead. Look how quickly they die. They are getting massacred back here. These Shotels are nuts at raiding. Like, they are so good. They, they probably they probably take the crown from the Elite Eagle Warrior when it's Villager. And they attack so quickly as well. They are crazy good. And uh, with just, a, you know, a little bit of raiding, suddenly uh, Purple's economy is not in a good place. Uh, I think this is, this is kind of going to be drawing to a close here. As uh, Ganesha gets pushed back. Uh, he's finally done the heavy scorpion upgrade. This is really important for him. Because uh, I feel like that's what he needs versus the Huskulls here. I kind of, I mean, attack bonus versus infantry, but... Yeah, I, the, the Arbalest is going to make it difficult for these sort of scorpions to be too effective. Plus the fact that we've got Onagers in here. I would have said, you know, Onager for Gamesha would have been the better choice in general. But still, um, the raiding from Plopper with these Shotels is just... No, just the, the villagers! That they just die instantly. Please. Ah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, no murder holes for Cox not Glock. So that castle may go down eventually if he doesn't deal with these three as well. But yeah. Uh, Larry Chollum. Uh, I do cast expert games still from time to time. I did look for an expert game to cast today, but sadly I couldn't find one. Uh, none of the experts were playing um, when I was looking, so I couldn't get a game. It's really difficult to find games with top players, because they just don't play very often, sadly. Uh, but yeah, this is looking like it's GG now. Uh, Plopper and, and uh, Ponato and Nelos are going to get the win, it seems. Uh, C. John oh, not C. John yeah, there it is. C. John and Jeff for Plopper. I was going to say, like, they, they look like Siege Dodgers, but no, uh, now they're Siege Dodgers, and he's probably got Torsion Engines as well, so Plopper here is going to be doing some serious work with these guys, we've got an endless flood of Halbs and Huskulls from Green, and uh, Nelos has absolutely cleaned out Teal's face, so it's, it's basically 3v2, it's, it's game for these guys, and, um, and it's looking good for uh, the team on the north. I think, I think they've got this. There's no question about it. They, they've got this. They're all over it. They're on it like a car bonnet. And uh, there's not a lot left in defense for, for purple. As uh, Teal's going to be... Uh, sorry, not Teal. Uh, Gray's going to be closing in on his right-hand side very quickly. And uh, Bob is making good headway versus Kamisha as well here. These guys feel uh, a little untouchable, perhaps. Purple saying it looks like it's GG. I would agree. No, they're going to call it. And... Um, well played, well played. Uh, yeah, Red has the water on the, the top as well. The, the team on the south had got the water this entire time. Um, so yeah, actually, Count and Galleons from Gamisha. I, I totally forgot about that, sorry. Uh, but it's not enough. Like I said at the start of this game, it's going to come down to the lap. And you can clearly see water for Gamisha is not achieving a whole lot. 
it's not achieve achieving a whole lot. Because he can't really do too much damage from the water when everything's in the middle of the map. Look at where the gold is here. And look at where all the villagers chopping wood are. But anyway, they're not calling GG yet. And uh, there's one reason for that. This is Regicide. And uh, I think a vicious wants to, wants to go for a king snipe here. So we gotta we gotta check out where their kings are. Uh, Pona, Pona Tio, his king is perhaps in a castle. Yeah, it's in this castle right here. That's the king. And uh, I think I think Gamisha wants to do a king snipe on someone. Maybe get some kind of revenge. But they are they are the enemies are closing in. Gamisha doesn't want to call GG. He wants to do a transport. And he wants to go for a King Snipe. That could work. That's the transport. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, he's got a few more on the way out, but I'm wondering what he's actually going to transport away. What is he going to transport away? I don't know. The the time pressure is too much. The time pressure is too much for these guys. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Teal's that's 15 pop. Gamisha's losing ground quickly. His king is in this castle. And, uh, I don't know. No traps yet. I mean, the traps from Popper need to move in to take this castle down. But Gamisha's hopping in some village. Uh, it's not going to work. Gamisha, it's not going to happen, man. This, yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> that's funny. There's villagers. I think they're un they're unattackable. I don't think uh, I don't think Ray can attack those. Well. It's kind of funny, but it, it's GG. I mean, Gamisha cannot king snipe this. He, there's, there's no way he can do it. But uh, it's GG now. Uh, Purple's resigned. 